Hello, my name's Nunny, and you're watching Underground Heroes. My name's Malcolm Monk. I'm a singer-songwriter, more of a songwriter than, than a um, performer. Most of my songs have a country or folk feel about them. I'm an Irish and British citizen and I, at the moment I live in Leipzig in Germany. How long have you been making music and what got you started? Well, back in the 1970s when I was living at home, we had a piano and so I used to bash around on the piano, probably a bit unsuccessfully, but at least I was getting things out there, feeling that I was doing something with regard to, to the sort of music that I felt inside of me. Then in the 1980s, when I was living in London, um, I would meet up quite regularly with a, an old school friend of mine. We would, you know, get together and, uh, rec well, record some songs, well, make some songs, and then we recorded them onto a great big uh, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder you know, if anyone can remember what those beasts were like. Then after that, um, well then I got married and um, uh, became self-employed and so really I, I had to put the music to one side really. And then eventually in uh, 2006, 2007, around about that time, we were living in Berlin and I bought myself a keyboard and um, Yes, I, and I, I, I made a lot of um, instrumental piano tracks, uh, probably about 60 or 70 of those. And then, you know, my wife said to me, well, why don't you, you know, make some songs with, with vocals in? You like lyrics, why don't you do something with, um, with a vocal in? So I thought, oh, that's a good idea, why don't I do that? So I started composing some songs, you know, and uh, then signed up with a distributor, in my case, uh, CD Baby, and um, yeah, went on from there. What's your latest release called? Tell us a little something about the track. My latest release is a song called Life's For Living, and um, it's a folk rock song, and basically it's about um, two friends, one who's an optimist and one who's a pessimist, and basically how that sort of uh, plays out. Who's the last artist you just listened to? The last artist I listened to, well, there's been two uh, uh, indie artists that I've listened to recently. Uh, one is January Fire's latest album, An Empty Nest, which is a really good album. And another one by Ollie Sanders, who, um, He's based in Bournemouth, where I grew up, and um, he has a great album out also, and that's called um, Play by Play by Ear, I think it's called, or Play by Play by Ear, I think it is, and that's also a really good album. So, I mean, if you're looking for something new to listen to that you haven't listened to before, um, I can heartily recommend both of these albums. You know, they're well worth listening to. Can you tell me an interesting fact about you? Something that we probably wouldn't know? Well, I'll give you an interesting fact and hope it is interesting for you. Um, when I was sort of 16 or 17, um, I went for a football trial with my local professional football club, AFC Bournemouth. Yeah, I mean, I passed the trial. They said that um, I should come and train with the youth team, you know, in the evenings. That was great, really exciting, couldn't believe my luck and, you know, a great deal of uh, uh, tremendous excitement. Unfortunately for me, it was like the winter of 1973-74. It was what was called the three-day week sort of happening and going on in the UK. Well, I mean, there were strikes first, there been strikes and um, power cuts and, and so on and so forth but you know I wasn't against what the strikers were after and they had a, a, a perfectly good um, you know right to be going after more money and all the rest of it and good luck to them I thought but it was unfortunate for me because it mean, meant that um, 
you know, the Bournemouth Football Club couldn't actually carry on with the training in the evenings because they didn't have the power for the floodlights and so um, they said well in future we're just going to concentrate on the youth team members themselves and uh, the others like myself um, were sort of jettisoned so that was my 10 minutes of fame I suppose you could say but you know I mean it was a great experience and you've got to try and take the best from all these experiences and uh, yeah it's fantastic really. What are your plans musically for 2022? Well, I've got three or four songs on the go at the moment, so I'll probably bring them out as singles over the course of the year. But, um, yeah, I was thinking about maybe an album or, or um, you know, well, no, an album maybe, but then really I want to try and do something with these um, piano, instrumental piano tracks I've got, and also get some more music videos on YouTube, so I probably won't have enough time to do an album, so it'll just have to be singles for this year. What's inspired you to do music? When I was about seven, the Beatles came out and I was crazy, crazy about them. And, um, you know, I would sing all their songs like, you know, She Loves You, Come By Me Love, I Wanna Hold Your Hand, those sort of things. I would sing them in the car in the house, in the garden, everywhere really. So much so that I think my parents wanted to strangle me. Of course they'd have loved to have strangled Lennon and McCartney too, but they couldn't get anywhere near them, mainly for screaming girls. Um, I did do a little bit of stuff in the 1970s and 80s, but really I had a, you know, when I was eight, my father was killed and um, you know that had a great effect on me really and uh, well to be honest my my life was chaos really up until I was around about 35 when I met my wife to be and um, she was an artist by training and, and would, you know I would watch her painting and things like that and I could see that the enjoyment she got from creating paintings you know, and uh, she said to me, well, look, if you, if you think that you've got something that you can, you know, make up uh, songs and all the rest of it, why don't you get out there and do it? You've got to, if you think you've got something creative inside of you, you've got to get it out. It's good for your soul. It's not good to keep it all uh, bottled up. And so, you know, that's what I did. And, and that's really what inspires me now because, you know, that sort of, creative joy that you get from making music is really what inspires me to, to make music. Okay, dream gig. What two artists or bands, dead or alive, would you perform with? And where would that gig be? Well, the two persons that I would like to have a dream gig with would be Ray Davis from The Kinks. Uh, the other one would be Jim Lee uh, from Slade. Well, with Ray Davies, you know, uh, I'd always been a fan of the Beatles, but I also got into the Kinks as well and uh, bought their first album that came out in 1964. To be honest, I really preferred their more melodic stuff from the mid-60s. I thought Sunny Afternoon and um, Waterloo Sunset were two of the best songs that have been ever made. I remember watching the Kinks on TV in 1966 when they were number one with um, sunny afternoon and it was at the time of the 1966 World Cup in, in England and uh, so it was a good time, good field time and um, I was intrigued by Ray Davis, it was like, you know, I thought, oh, you know, I kind of know this bloke somehow, this guy, you know, and, uh, you know, obviously I didn't but it was a strange feeling that I had from that. With Jim Lee, um, I always loved his bass playing with Slade. I thought he was really uh, great with his bass playing, he was very good. And he had, um, he was a, a, a good songwriter and also a good musician too. I think he'd uh, been with the Staffordshire Youth, or Youth Orchestra as a violinist and played many other instruments. Um, Chas Chandler, who was the um, manager of Slade, and had been a bass guitarist with the Animals who thought that Jim Lee was a far better bass player than he was. And he also thought he was a fantastic songwriter and musician too, very underrated musician, he thought. 
Bearing in mind that Chess Chandler was Jimi Hendrix's manager, then you have to take on board that, you know. So, where would I like this dream? Well, I mean, to be honest, I'd rather actually, um, rather than do a gig, I'd rather just write songs with these two. But seeing as it's a gig you're asking about, um, I could play the um, Linda McCartney role that she played with Wings when Paul used to get, get her behind a, um, a keyboard and she'd be tapping away on the chords and I could play that role, you know, if I was sort of at the back somewhere where people couldn't see me, I could probably do a half decent job. If I was going to do a gig, it'd have to be somewhere not too big, so somewhere like the Hammersmith Palais in London. Um, I saw the Kinks there once and um, it's an ex it was a dance hall, it's closed now unfortunately, but you know, there was a rapport between the crowd and the band because it wasn't too big a place. So, but I mean, to be honest, I'd be equally happy, well, more happy probably just playing in a pub, you know, that, you know, that, that, had, that had bands where you could have bands in a pub somewhere, that would be nice. Thanks for the interview. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? Um, and of course, uh, I need to thank uh, Nani for, um, uh, for allowing, to, allowing me to make this um, this interview, an underground, underground heroes interview. Um, I just hope he doesn't come to regret it. I'd like to make a shout out, especially to uh, Nicholas Lindbergh. <laughs> and 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 also to Shane Larman, because um, Nicholas Linder so is from Pinstripes, and you know, both of them have got um, a number of playlists and been kind enough to put. Uh, a number of my songs on their playlist which has helped me immensely, you know. And I'd also like to thank Ollie from Radio TFSC. Uh, he's a great guy, he's the first one to play any of my songs on the radio and uh, he's really a great guy for indie, indie uh, artists. Finally, there's about 20, 25 people on Twitter that I regularly um, interact with, you know, their um, fellow indie artists and I tend to go in uh, most days, well nearly every day actually, and just check out what they're doing and like and um, retweet or pre-say that they have any and they tend to do the same for me. And um, you know, I can't name them all, they know who they are and they know me and I'd just like to thank them all for helping me uh, and I hope I've also helped them too, but they've been a great help in helping me get my stuff out there. And I'd like to thank everybody who's just watched this video and hopefully I haven't um, bored you to death. So thank you very much for, for uh, listening and watching. Thank you.